I want to look at now we're past the deadline. All the teams have made the trades that they're going to make. Now I only, I put the East, but then I was looking at it. Let's do the East and the West. There is a, a bit of a wild card race going on right now. I think for the most part in the East, the divisions are set. I'd say like, I think it's going to be Carolina, New Jersey, and the Rangers are going to be the three teams in the Metro. Boston, Toronto, Tampa are going to be the teams in the Atlantic. But we got a very interesting, there's many teams who are, I think, are in the wildcard race in the in the East. And I'll list them off. So the Islanders uh, have 74 points in the first wildcard spot. Then the Penguins have 73 just behind the second wild spark wild card spot sorry then you go florida with 70 ottawa with 68 buffalo with 68 washington with 68 and detroit with 65 and then we kind of fall off a bit yeah. we got philly with 59 and and um and so on what two teams from that list do you think will make the playoffs this year oh um, who I'd like to see is probably Buffalo. Okay. Yeah. And man, like, okay. So like I'm conflicted here when I saw the list because we've always talked about the legacy of Crosby and Malkin and I want them to make it. The only thing is if they do make it, I feel like. It's just going to give Ron Hextel another free hand to be like, see, we're still a contender. We could still get in there. I just have to keep adding. And I think not that like, I want him fired or anything. I'm just thinking that there has to be a change in the mentality of things. I think that he did a little bit of too much of the same thing. And it cost quite a bit in terms of the assets and the cap hit to try to improve this team right now. But I think if there's going to be one wake up call right now, especially in the twilight years of Crosby's career, I think it's right now that you need this wake up call. Like, wait a minute. We're not as good as we thought we were. So other than them, um, I don't know. Like, would it be crazy to say like, I want the Ottawa senators to make it. I, I mean, no, I don't think it's crazy, but do you think, do you think they can, um, would be my question. I think if they pull it all together, if I think, okay, I think a big thing is, is what Derek Broussard and Claude Giroux came out and said, it's just kind of like what they expected out of this team. And I think that if the young guys buy into that idea, mm -hmm. then it is possible for them because, you know, they, they swung for the fences with Jacob Chikrin, um yeah. this season. Um, I, I think that they wouldn't have done it if they didn't believe in themselves. And I think that that's another jolt for them. That's the right jolt for them to make a run. Okay, so who are the two teams? I think it's Buffalo and Ottawa. Oh, that's a that is a good, good show. I, I think so. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe I'm a bit biased because I want Helios Sorokin to go <laughs> as far as possible. But I, I I do think the Islanders listen. They have a three games in hand on a lot of teams. Uh, sorry, three games more played. Sorry, than a lot of teams behind them. Um, I, I say the Islanders get a wild card spot. Um. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Buffalo as the second wild card team. Okay. I think like I think they can make a really big push and I I want to say they have a lot they have a few games same with Florida um with teams in the battle with them so there's a lot of four point games um going I obviously they're still missing Alex Tuck for a little bit, which will definitely hurt. But I think once they get him back, they got a team going. And really, if the goaltending can just stay together, mm. they're going to be 
fine and they're going to face one of Carolina or Boston. And even if they get killed, I don't think it matters. The fact that they got into the playoffs for them should be, um, should be impressive enough. Yeah. I think it'd be a good lesson for them to uh, go against a Carolina. And I've said it before on the show, the players they have here now, it's different. They actually want to be in Buffalo. Um, And I think that, we talk about adversity with teams and that's how they got better. I think with the Sabres, there are so many of these uh, growing pains that they're really embracing that they're still able to keep their composure despite the losses. There's not, it's not like how it was before. We're just, you know, they they were massacred out there. I think the Sabres are learning to be more competitive and they're learning to really capitalize on that core they're building. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, now let's go to the West. The West is a little bit of a cluster because yeah. the division spots aren't really wrapped up. Um, like Edmonton could still make a divisional spot. It's very, uh, very messy. But I'm gonna try to narrow down the teams who could be in a in somewhat of a wild card spot um it's a lot of a shorter list than the east though um right now edmonton and winnipeg hold the two wild card spots with 78 and 75 points and then just behind them is calgary and nashville we can also throw seattle in the mix uh they're third in the pacific with 80 points we can throw colorado and minnesota in the mix they have uh 76 and 79 points like it's tight it's very very tight like we can do this in two ways. You can give me who you think is going to finish top three in each division and then give me the wild card spot because I think the West is a little bit messy. So maybe we we do that. Who do you think finishes top three in the Central? Okay, I think I'm going to pick the same teams, but I'm going to flip okay. it. I think Colorado is going to finish second and Minnesota okay. is going to finish third. And Dallas will stay in, Dallas in, will the, stay. in the top. So yeah, that that I could, I could see... I just, yeah, I wonder how much injuries still affect Colorado. Like they just have a, they've had such a poor year in terms of injuries. Um, Okay. You know what? I will agree with you. How about in the Pacific? Like right now, Vegas and LA are tied with 82 points. Seattle sitting just behind them at 80. Who do you think finishes in the top three spots? Okay. So I think Los Angeles will win the Pacific. Okay. And I think it will going to be Vegas and Seattle because I want to see Vegas and Seattle in the playoffs. In the playoffs. That would be in that would be one. very interesting. But I'm I'm maybe I'm trying to be too much of an agent of chaos. Mm-hmm. But here's my hope. I hope the Kraken finish first. In the Pacific, <laughs> because I want a Vegas LA oh, first okay, yes, round rematch. series. No, no, no. <laughs> Screw the rematch. Okay. Think about Jonathan Quick on the Vegas Golden Knights uh, yeah, yeah, going yeah. up <laughs> against the team that traded him for like nothing. Tell, well, I mean, they got Gavrikov. I mean, tell oh, me yeah. that's not entertaining. That'd be entertaining. Um, and he's doing pretty well. Like, he's, he hasn't been bad. No, he hasn't been bad. I mean, he's in front of a uh, arguably a better team. Um, all I'm saying is that would be a first round matchup and a half if we got to see Vegas and LA in the first round. Now that leaves. So you, you said you you keep the same three teams. Yeah, I keep the same three. Teams. Okay, let's keep it simple. Um, now that leaves us with four teams: Edmonton, Winnipeg, Calgary, and Nashville. I think the other teams are just way too far down. Yeah. Um, who, what are the combination? What are the two teams that you would pick for the wild card um, spot? I pick Edmonton and I actually keep it Edmonton and Winnipeg. Winnipeg. I think the Flames, I think they're just not enough there this year. I think, you know, they're going to come out maybe better a lot next year, but I think it's just this year, it's just not there. I've talked about it in our, um, 
in our season preview that I loved the moves they did. I think they were great. They didn't back down. They supplemented everything that they've lost with uh, Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Goudreau yeah. and really fortified things. You know, Mackenzie Weger was solid as well. It's just I had chemistry issues. I had issues of are these guys going to repeat the same seasons they had last year? And individually, they've been solid, but it's just not there. I think we had their fun with Calgary last year, but I think they're going to just, I don't know, this, just take this as a step back because I just don't see there's enough there. Um, with the Oilers, I think they're going to keep surging. Um, I could even argue that maybe they will be the ones that will break into the division, but I'll pick them. And I think with Winnipeg too, I think th- they've been pretty bad this last this last stretch of things, but yeah, they've done what they could for the core they have right now. And, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois is getting healthier too. So we'll see what happens. Um, Nashville, no, like, I don't know. It's just, uh, they, they sold at the deadline. I, I think it just, I think about locker room culture. Like, how do you still try to like, say like, we're going to go for the playoffs after we traded so many guys? The, 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 <laughs> The funny thing is, is so they're three. They have three games in hand on Winnipeg. And listen, obviously, you're, there's no guarantee you always win those games in hand. But let's say they do. That leaves them tied in points <laughs> at the Winnipeg, which I think is, uh, it is hilarious. To be honest, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> if yeah, they finished. <laughs> yeah. They finished in a playoff spot and sold massively at the deadline. Um. I'd agree. I, to add on to Calgary, I think the other thing that's kind of been their downfall this year is just it has not been a good year for Markstrom. And like they yeah. keep going back to him because I kind of think they have to, the same way that the Oilers keep going back to Jack Campbell because they feel like they have to. Um, that's been one of their, even if Markstrom's looked fine at certain points, it's really been one of their big downfalls for frankly both alberta teams um in that their goaltending just hasn't been as up to par or as consistent as uh they would need it need it to be and and if you look at winnipeg like connor hellebuck's connor hellebuck man like that's i think gonna give them the edge over winnipeg i just think with edmonton when you have mcdavid and dry it's kind of hard like you're, yeah. you're, you're you have either if you don't make the playoffs that says a lot more about the team around mcdavid and dry and less about mcdavid and dry yeah in my I agree. Eyes. 